Hello again and welcome to another question of the day at MCAT Self Prep. Today we're going to be working through one of the many practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, home of the free MCAT eCourse. Today we're going to be working through a problem about amino acids and proteins, and it's found on Lesson 1 of our Biochemistry 1 module. My name is Theo Bennett and I'm a tutor here at MCAT Self Prep, and I actually used MCAT Self Prep to earn myself a perfect 528 when I took the MCAT exam. So I'm going to be walking you through this practice problem as though you were one of my private tutoring students. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, feel free to try this question out for yourself and hit pause. Okay, now that you've tried, let's dive right into our explanation. So in order to answer this question about amino acid synthesis, we first need to understand all of our amino acids. I hope I'm not the first person to tell you this, but you need to know all the amino acids. Not only that, you need to know their names, their structures, their three-letter codes, their one-letter codes, and which category each of them fall into. Basically, you need to know which amino acids are nonpolar, which are positively and negatively charged, and which answer, uh, amino acids are polar. That's the rough overview, but I would highly recommend being able to write down all of the R groups. And also, I would potentially recommend writing this down on the scratch paper that you're provided before your MCAT exam starts. You're given 13 minutes to walk through the MCAT tutorial, and most people use this time to just relax or to start earlier, but you can use that time instead to write down all the amino acids and as, men, as much information as you want. So to answer this question, we need to understand how amino acids are formed. And I'm not gonna lie, I chose this question on purpose because in undergrad, I was an organic chemistry TA, and so I actually love synthesis problems. So before we dive in, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. There's two main synthesis mechanisms, the Strecker and the Gabriel method. In the Strecker synthesis, we start with an aldehyde. And this aldehyde is going to be attached to the R group that we need for our amino acid. In the end, it goes through a complicated mechanism that involves cyanide. That's about as much as you need to know. And it ends up forming our amino acid, again, with the same R group. You can see the mechanism itself is beyond the scope of the MCAT. The other mechanism, that we need to know, or other pathway of synthesis, is the Gabriel method. Again, it uses crazy complicated uh, mechanisms, um, but the one thing that's important that we need to know is this step right here. So through an, an elaborate mechanism, we create a negative charge on a carbon. Again, this is a highly reactive nucleophilic entity, and this is going to attack an alkyl group, an alkyl group specifically that's bound to the R group of our amino acid. Once this is attached, then the rest of the st steps are history and we end up with um, amino acids. You can't see the end product here because my face is over it. Um, but suffice it to say that um, we end up with amino acids, again, with an amine group and a carboxylic acid group and our R group. The other important thing to know is these mechanisms produce racemic mixtures of both the L and D enantiomers of uh, amino acids. And so if you want a pure product, you're going to have to perform additional steps. All right, now let's go back and answer this question. Now, the lazy way of answering this, and again, I, I kind of advocate laziness sometimes, is to know that Basically, there's only one mechanistic step that we need to know in all of amino acid synthesis um, for these two different types, and that is SN2, right? But specifically, again, with the Gabriel synthesis, this is the mechanism that involves creating that negative charge on a carbon that goes and attacks an alkyl group uh, that is attached to the R group of your amino acid. For the other mechanism, which is the Strecker synthesis, that involves starting with an aldehyde attached to the R group. So in the Strecker synthesis pathway, we start with the R group attached, and with the, and with the Gabriel method, we add the R group in later as an intermediate step. Thanks again for watching these videos. I hope you really enjoy them. I enjoy making them, and so feel free to like and subscribe if you are interested in more content. And at MCAT Self Prep, we're really just committed to providing as much free, helpful resources to people trying to take the MCAT as possible. So if you're interested, feel free to head over to our YouTube channel or also to MCATSelfPrep.com for more content like this. Thanks again, and see you next time.